Okay, right about now we got ourselves a power cut. My telephone is still working, landline telephone, so essentially I can still do some work. But essentially, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get cold. That's the way it is right now. Now, this is rather weird because I got itchy feet, let's be honest, okay? Because I let the wash ferment for three weeks and it was still a little bubbly, okay? So I thought, you know, sod this, I want to speed up the process. I'm still experimenting, still learning, so I'm going to ferment it anyway. This was based on less than 50 pences worth of yeast to make the alcohol today, okay, for this one particular run that we're doing. So essentially, I don't think that, you know, if you're actually making ethanol, if you've got the right quantity of sugar, you don't need to worry too much uh, about the, you know, the type of yeast. Alcohol was still produced. Okay, we got it up to 9% uh, by volume for the wash itself. Now, if this is a 25 litre uh, wash and we've got, let's say, 10%, then we're talking about 2.5 litres coming out. Taking into account, that's for pure alcohol, and we're, we normally go at about 85% alcohol by volume for the um, ethanol that we manufacture using this method and put in these jars. Maybe it could be closer to three, but I don't know if we're going to quite get that much. I mean, I don't know. This is just still experimentation with different forms of fermentation technology, uh, combinations of ingredients and the like, and to see basically how far we can go with that. But the fact of the matter is, four and a half kilograms of sugar, and remember that's at 85 pence per kilogram, okay, plus only three of the sachets of yeast from the pack of bread yeast, which contains six sachets, which means that the cost of the yeast was less than 50 pence. Which means that, you know, what we're producing here could actually be a comparatively affordable fuel by comparison with the um, commercially available bioethanol prices. Okay, guys and girls, temperature's going up. So, um, we can be expecting the, you know, we're rapidly reaching the time of alcohol production. Remember, homemade bioethanol isn't just a question of heating and cooking. It's also a question of making uh, hand sanitizers, things to kill germs on surfaces, sanitize wounds, uh, basically you name it. The number of uses alcohol has is actually massive. As you can see, we just finished making the high volatiles, which is the first uh, 50 milliliters of run that comes up. That contains acetone, apparently, okay? Another really nasty stuff that Alcoholics wouldn't want to drink unless they wanted to go blind, but also you can use that for a lot of cleaning purposes It's very efficient and very flammable. So If you can make different products, you can do different things with them. Okay I got the temperatures right right now. So essentially we got the alcohol flowing out perfectly 56 degrees is good on the turbo 500 ethanol distiller the Stuff's clearer than leg crystal glass First jar proofing out, about 90% alcohol by volume, being 180 proof, being pretty flammable. So there you go, stuff you can kill germs with, stuff you can set on fire, stuff you can use to uh, start fires with, polish metal with. Jar number one, two, three, four, proofs out just a little under 90%. Okay, just a little bit under, okay, you're talking about like 89% or thereabouts, which is good going. So this is jar number five. If we complete this jar fully and we're almost there, that'll prove that my um, prophecy about how much alcohol can be obtained through this method uh, using this type of yeast, this type of sugar and all the rest of that, and these quantities. Uh, would be correct. Jar 5 proofing out just below 90 but above 85 we're talking about about 87 percent yeah about 87 percent I think alcohol by volume okay very good and yeah that's jar number 6 on the way as we're coming right to the end of the distillation run, I'm pretty sure that's what's happening here because it's very difficult to maintain uh, the temperature that's required to get the distillate coming off. Um, 
and also we got a lot more variability of temperature presumably because a lot more of the uh, evaporatable ethanol is actually leaving um, the distiller body itself so therefore it's difficult just to get the, the dregs out of the actual fermentation run into good quality distillate one two three four five six okay jar six proofing out around about 85 percent alcohol by volume approximately speaking so I got six little jars out of this run plus a little more um, so number one Steve Harris is right in the fact that four and a half kilograms of sugar being 10 pounds weight is enough for a 25 liter fermentation run I used three sachets out of the six sachets of yeast which you get in uh, one of those packs of bread yeast it costs uh, less than a pound to buy the pack of um, bread yeast so essentially I spent less than 50 pence on the sugar on the yeast which I used for this particular run the sugar cost 46 pence yes I did use some kind of finings to clear uh, the wash itself uh, I did the fermentation for a period of three weeks. There was still some fermentation happening at the end of it, so I could have left it longer. If after the fermentation had ceased, I'd let, let the whole thing settle for a full period of, let's say, another month, then I probably wouldn't have needed to use the fining, so I'd have cut down on the cost of that. So essentially, we're talking about a very cheap way of producing alcohol using um, a domestic level uh, reflux distiller and um, yeah basically the whole thing worked and it worked fantastically and now I've got fuel I sure as hell I'm going to be happy to have a fresh stock of fuel to keep the fireplace going mm -hmm. 